absolutely unbelievable. You died as I was loading into the bloody game. Welcome, Rim Rims, to uh, Rimworld, the adventures of our good friend, Arco Seed Volcanian Ohm himself. We are currently midway through the industrial era. We're not that far through the industrial era quite yet, but we've got some very, very key technologies. We're in the middle of setting up a gigantic training room so that the next generation of this colony, which hopefully will be around soon because our numbers have dwindled quite significantly, those guys will be good and helpful for the colony rather than the last generation who were uh, uh, complete shit, to be honest. Unfortunately, Worcester Sauce, in an incredible display of selfishness, died. Now that caribou is here eating its meal. <laughs> Goodbye, Worcester Sauce. She was the oldest of the entire house gravy plasma, so that was a uh, was a pretty significant person to lose. Perfect. That is exactly what I wanted to achieve. Little Hezron is old enough to work, so he's old enough to start training. Kicking things off with a nice chill melee training, though, for a little while. They're soldiers first, then they'll get some prospects in life. What on earth is this? Cerulean synthetic meat? Okay, or mechaponics, which could be a pretty good idea. I mean, look, we're in the middle of an ice age, right? I'm gonna go mechaponics. Oh, shit. 7.5% construction speed, 5% increase in construction success chance. I do want to plate the castle with something a bit more durable. It's probably not gonna be adamantium, to be completely honest with you. But we do have, of course, castle walls that we can build out of any variety of things, including rubies, which would be insane. I was thinking the Tiznite material that we've got from Mechala is apparently designed for that. 1,080 hit points, and it's just a a regular old wall, right? So it won't take us long to build. And while I remember, let's use the Phasarium that gives a bonus to uh, healing rate, I think. And then we'll go ahead and swap some of these beds out in here, make it into a proper hospital. Autonomous crafting, wow. Seems so early for that, but it's the first tier of the auto assembler. Or we build remote explosives. Oh, fatigable. Not another one. Wow. Fatigable. There we are. 75 years of age. Holy crap. A couple of people have asked the reason we've gone back to the heart attack mod rather than the age mod. What was it called? Time matters or something like that. The one that Soda gave them health conditions that eventually killed them is because that mod is currently broken with this version of RimWorld. So it's back to the very tragic and very sudden heart attacks. What on earth have they got here? Arcotech cortex what on earth does it do it appears that a thin metallic mesh that sits on top of the brain allows it to teleport electric signals to other distant areas of the brain faster thought processes wow okay oh, we've got architect regenerator once installed it ma passively manufactures pico scale mechanites that slowly restore the host telomerase Restoring them to the biological mid-20s and grant them seemingly eternal youth. Wow, like what that lobster does. Finally, we can evolve to crab people. Lobster's longevity may be due to telomerase, an enzyme that repairs long repetitive sections of DNA sequences. Was lobsters all along? Uh, I'm gonna, I, I'm more than happy to turn Ohm into a lobster. <laughs> Which is not as sentence I thought I would ever say. Uh, what have they got in terms of Barnix though? Compression, stomach, dermoplating, synthetic lung, nothing particularly special. Advanced Giga Television. Uh, I'm not going to be buying that on account of it being $101,000. An installed regenerator may be upgraded with an additional implant. Upon upgrading, the embedded AI will become fully functional and begin releasing more complex healing mechanisms into the bloodstream that will heal long-term damage. Oh. Though it cannot respond quickly to prevent fatal damage should it occur. The third and final upgrade gives the implant a larger mechanite capacity, reducing the time needed to heal wounds. Should fatal damage be incurred, the implant will release a burst of mechanoids that will attempt to bring them back to life. Holy shit. Um. We'll take the lot. I mean, I want to buy the Arco Cortex. Do give that to Ciala in the hopes that it might repair her brain injury. How on earth am I going to be able to afford this? I'll sell you some, uh... Do you want some antimatter? You want some titanium? Titanium, even if we sell all of it, won't cover it. Give them some mithril. Give them some mithril. There we are. Okay, so these are like insane injectors then, huh? Arcotech Cortex. Ciala? Have it? By all means. Ohm? You get the regenerator. That's it. It's, it's just, there's no, there's no big song and dance. It's just, oh, natural healing factor of 175%. 
if anybody needs it, it's Ohm. Because if anything happens to Ohm, we're in a lot of trouble. Works like a Psylink. So we, we've now upgraded that to level 2. Natural healing factor times 175. Healer not charged. 0.06% charge. Oh. Oh, cool. And that's what releases long-term issues. Can it cure his trauma savant? This might finally fix that damage Ohm took right at the start of everything. Wow. And what about your, your brain? Oh, you haven't installed it yet. Well, I'll take your time. There are so many things that I just don't recognize. I could take Cortex Tier 1. That's the same as what Ohm has. Ah, oh, that's what that is. Cool. Wow, so Ciala and Ohm are, are kind of going on to the same level there, eh? And that's restored her. It hasn't fixed the 6 out of 12, but it has brought her back up to a normal level. That's that's great. That's fantastic. One day we'll get there. One day Ohm will remember how to build all of these things and we will be we will be unstoppable. We will be gods on this earth. Uh, for the time being, though, I'll take um, I'll take a battery if that's okay. Uh, that doesn't look good. Uh, Dawn? Dawn? I need you to not do whatever you're doing. What the fuck happened here? There's like an oil spill everywhere. Oh, I can't see anything damage. I can't see any split pipes. I guess it just can occasionally spill. I mean, like, let me be honest. There's nothing flammable nearby. We could just, um... We could just light the thing. <laughs> you know I've got to try it. I've never done it before. I have to try it. Everyone else, piss off. Come and stand back. All right, there we go. Uh, right, you stop. Oh, wow. Oh, that goes up fast, eh? Holy shit. I should have already seen that one coming. Uh, that was worth it. I've never done that before. I've always wanted to light an oil spill. Yeah, definitely worth it, for sure. Ah, there we go. Now let's go for the auto crafter. And I think we should probably take a look and kind of see how far we are through industrial. We've made a pretty good dent into it so far. So this all this uh, middle green section, but there are giant chunks we're still missing, eh? Wow. There's so much to it in this. Even though, like I've said before, it's it's kind of, in terms of the mod pack, the least impressive out of all of them. Because base game remote just has a lot of industrial stuff, right? And a lot of it is all very closely tied in together. So all of the Rim Factory stuff is all kind of similar. Builds off of one another. When we get up to Space Attack, though, that's when... That's when things are going to go a little batshit crazy. So let's go train melee on those forever. And then I guess we'll see um, uh, if the children actually develop any passions. Because we had a whole generation where the passions were bugged. They had kids and the kids' passions based on the parents' passions. So there weren't any. So the, the children being born with passions are basically non-existent, right? Um, it's only the kind of newer generations with the fresh blood. So like the Sabats have quite a few passions because they're ones that have descended from someone with a passion. We need fresh blood. We need a raid that isn't insects or animals or a giant horrific black leaper from Void. What we really need are blunt weapons that I'm going to instantly kill people too. That'd be quite handy. Because the weapons we've got right now, these e even just these regular adamantium swords, they're like absolutely devastating. 76.34. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should just craft blunt weapons instead. Let's go to the weapons tab and see exactly what we've got here under craftable. So by... So by... I mean, we can go by damage rather than DPS. But let's go by DPS then, and we'll see what... Uh, so the highest blunt is Sen. After that... Fisting. Or hammering. Or clubbing. Damn, maybe maybe it is the power fist. Maybe, jokes aside, they are legitimately not a terrible idea then. <gasps> yes! Unlock mechanized automated melee weaponry. Industrial power armor. I don't want to know. I don't want to see it. I don't want to know what it does. Let me have this surprise. 10,000 research makes it by far the most expensive thing we've ever researched so far in the campaign. Then in the meantime, we will change directive. Let's go for the power fist then. And let's make that out of element X32, I think it was called. We're also back over to Cassandra Classic. Fair enough. That's okay. That might actually give us a chance to get some fresh recruits. There we are. Cell automation robots. So a little introduction here to automation. These are placeable robots so you place on a workbench worker cell and it will start doing work at that bench. So these are uh, directly attached to, uh, say, a fabrication bench, have them immediately churn out components. That's actually pretty good. Now, I also wanted to check on the rather frightening Arcadius II. 12.36 crafting is huge. 14 
and 10 days. We've closed the gap there, despite the fact that as his skill... He's always going to age at the same rate, right? But as his skill increases, his ability to train that's going to become harder and harder. Remember, he was like, uh, what, like 10 or 12? And he only had like six crafting. So we're doing a pretty damn good job. I think it'll start falling off pretty damn fast when we get passed through to 15, 16 skill. We are also assembler Mark 1. So do those go directly onto the machine like that, do you think? So the blue zone is in the interaction spot because we could have one of these set up for the gas converter and the way it works is the area around that will collect ingredients and and generally with with some of the more advanced machines you could change the size of the area they can they can access so we could build one say like uh like here for example that would allow it to pick resource off any of those two shelves and be able to build things automatically for us room factory has changed a little bit since i last played what we'll do then is why don't we throw down actually what do we need for the element x32 so we need tisnite, plasteel, and the gas. Why don't we just throw one down in here, put the robot down in front of it, spend all episode making fancy purple armor, and it might already be outclassed. Oh, postural two. So this is essentially a form of quarry again that automatically extracts materials from underground. Can cause infestation. I feel like at this point, we're, we're pretty good at handling insects. Show me the armor. What do you think, machining table? Let's go industrial... Industry, anytime now. Industrial power armor? Ah, there it is. Fuck me, that is expensive. What the hell? Oh my god, it gives another 30% work speed. I assume it's incompatible with the exo frame. Uh, layer utility. No, almost certainly not in that case. Middle and outer. Wowie. Uh, it's not stuffable from the looks of it. Uh, yeah, it's not stuffable. 20 components, 1000 steel, 200 uranium, 200 chem fuel. So proper power armor then, huh? Whoa, uh, armor sharp 150%, terrible blunt resist, terrible heat resist. I would argue, I mean, you can't even really argue it. It is a downgrade in terms of defensive stats. Compared to what we've got going on right now, we would have to sacrifice the middle and outer layers of this, which in this case is the adamantium flat jacket and flat vest. Flat jacket gives just fucking, like, all by itself, more bonuses than the other thing, right? The question is, do we want... Do we want work speed bonuses? Here's what I'm thinking. Ohm is hard to kill anyway. Why don't we just make one of these for Ohm? Oh, and look at the description. Requires 100 chem fuel to run. Fuel, full fuel will last for four hours in game. Without fuel, armor will cause the pawn to not be able to move when worn. Oh, interesting. That's very, very cool. So move speed minus two. I think that move speed minus two is mitigated when the armor is fueled. 30% work speed, 500%, uh, sorry, plus 500 carry capacity is incredible. We do a pickup and haul. I have to, I have to, I have to do it. I have to see it. I have to see Ohm wearing industrial power armor. Then, big brain, he has the showdown with the Zorus Morph Queen we've been waiting for. He can have his power armor and his industrial exoskeleton. And then he can say the very famous line from the movie, uh, which is nothing because he's trauma savant. He'll just kind of look at her blankly. Look at these morons training melee the old-fashioned way. Cheap in hindsight. It probably is, like, way faster. <laughs> yes, I did just build a bunch of training stations when we have a whole bunch of martial arts targets. What's your point? Do these even train melee in hindsight? Hang on. 5.74. 5.75. Oh, they do, but it's incredibly slow. Apparently not as good as sitting in front of a computer and reading. I've watched Bleach. I'll have, you know, a very good with a katana. Well, the pulse trolls are complete. Oh, look, there's a fedora. Um, we could go for... <laughs> we could give him a fedora and power armor, which would be incredible. Um, I think we'll just get it out the way anyway, because it's the cheapest of all these research, and I don't really want any of them. Kind of bizarre that it is an industrial tech, but we have the option now of dynamic electromagnetics. Allows you to fabricate buildings using electromagnetic component that unlocks the upper tier of power generation and technology found in every glass of oil installation. A xenon ion turbine, for example. Hey, that's steam powered. That'd be kind of a cool way to tie into our steampunk theme we had going there for a little while. Oh, hang on a minute. It's Penny. Uh... Oh, she's an avian. Ah, why not take a visit to Ohmstown? We have silent and extremely deadly Arco men. Lightning bolt firing avian children. Descendants of semi-mythical religious figures with just horrible hair. And a zombie. Oh, literal straight up fucking zombie. Uh oh, oh. Wouldn't it be a shame if I were to have 
recently sold all of our titanium. Balls. In fact, now that I think about it, we don't even have the workbench to produce magnetic cores here, do we? Because that uses a very specific... A specific workbench added by Glitter Tech, which I think is a higher... A higher tier technology mod than what we have right now, so it might not even really be a problem. Quite literally, as I was sending them to smash up the other ship, we've had a bunch more. Okay, these are the ones that pop the insects out immediately, though. Yes, yeah, they really are. Um, who's that tiny child? There's an eight-year-old warrior of the White Eagle, uh, Tonna Bruca, who is about to be Tonna, Tonna dead. He was about to be Tonna dead. Oh, they landed in the freezer? Okay, Siala, uh, you've got a pretty impressive weapon there. Get to work. Uh, in fact, you know what? Let's just draft up anybody who actually has something to kill them with. Then maybe we should take a break from all this research for a little while just to... Just to sort out the fairly dire weapon situation. Look at this. We got like next to nothing. I mean, our armor is good enough where we'll be able to fist fight them and not have to worry about it. Don't really want to be doing that, though. It is still a gamble, as you can see from Cobalt. Every one of my fucking robots. Unbelievable. A child escape. Wow, it actually got away. That's, uh, that's fairly impressive. One more insect that's making a break for it. Oh, and his magic glowy sword have other plans. To say that that is a, an insanely powerful sword. It isn't game defining by itself because it chops parts clean off. Unless he goes for the head, it, it, it it's not going to make a huge... I was still three hits to take down a mega spider, despite the fact that it does 900, 800, 700 DPS. 656. The number on that keeps changing because of a mechanic in Yeo's combat. It's not really, not really a big deal. These are the ones that we also have to smash up straight away, right? Otherwise, they uh, they act as insect hives. You know, I didn't take a look and see how effective these beds actually are. Oh, yeah, they're insane. 176% surgery success chance. And boom, there it is. That is absurd. Look at the size of that. It's also legendary. Remaining charges 75 out of 75. Wow. 270, 72, 72 is good. Pretty good armor, to be honest. Uh, put it on. Can we recolor it first? <laughs> I don't think that's right for some reason. I got the strange impression. <laughs> Are you okay? Are you good? He seems good. Um, fuck it. I mean, why not? <laughs> He's bigger than the fucking Muffalo. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, it's, that's obscene. It's insane. It's not supposed to look like that. I'm fairly certain. But you know what? Shit. I mean, imagine becoming an enemy coming into the base and just seeing that greet them. And it's immediately run out of charge. Good. Really? That's as long as it lasted, eh? I didn't even get out of the room. What the f Is there a... <laughs> Is that... Sorry, are the charges the amount of steps you can take wearing it? He got from here to here. And it ran out. Oh, just fuck off. I'm so annoyed at that. There you go. One completely finished training room. So into every single one of these workstations, I'll paste train melee and only train melee. And then we take away coring and let's replace it with training. Arcade is the second is up to 15.73 and he's only 15. Oh, this is insane. We're, we're actually going to get ourselves another good crafter. I think honestly at this stage, he's such a good crafter. I'd rather him craft than well, learn to craft. It's a bit pointless keeping him there now. You lovers. Dawn and Bonds? Ah, oh, Dawn and Bone Crusher Jones? Yeah. Whoa, that's, uh, that's a weird one. <laughs> I love the fact that his name is Bons Bon Sabat. That is so good. I suppose we'll just crack out watermill generators. It's a bit pointless, but what are you building there, little robot? Oh, jump pack spines. Oh, I completely forgot I queued that up. That was ages ago now. We got four in storage. I feel like if we'd have kept that armor for Ohm and the armor actually works, that plus a jump pack spine would have been would have been horrifying. Jones! 
What are you doing to this friggin' bedroom, you idiot? This is a side effect of giving everybody absolutely obscene fisting powers. Sometimes the fister becomes the fisty. Deep frying. Yeah, that'll help out. Oh, there it is. Right, that's the thing that we need. Uh, advanced factorization, I think, is the thing we need to be able to build the magnetic cores, if I'm not mistaken. Syndamide composite will eventually allow us to make plastic. I think that's a bit pointless. Psychology isn't bad. I've got to go for this one, though. Electroplasmatics. I can't believe that's considered industrial. Electro... Yeah, there it is. Electroplasmatics are leading all the way through to eventually atomic assembly. I feel like it's a bit bizarre having that in the industrial era. Oh, Ohm's Arcotech Regenerator is 97% charged. I wonder what happens when it hits 100%. Another level of auto crafting to replace the crafting bots. The crafting bots are great. They're, they're, they're nice and all, but they're, they're pretty hefty on the game. So I'd be much happier going for some autonomous crafting there. That's a good idea. Oh, don't run away too far. I want to see what happens then. This Oh, 99% charged. 100%. Heal or not charged. I wonder if it needs to go to like uh, 101% or something weird like that. Ah. Oh. And healed his removed what? Nothing. Because he hasn't got anything removed. Oh, okay. So if you were to lose something, say for example, we could take away the copper nose. And that would regenerate his his natural nose. Apparently a copper nose is just as good, so I wouldn't do that. But Dawn and Captain Dawn again? Dawn, is that not like everybody? What's go what's what's going on here? Love a second cousin, love a second cousin, mother second cousin. Oh, it's only two people right now. Okay, fair enough. There you go. Autonomous crafting too. Thank you. The one I'm a little bit worried about is Arcadius the second because there, there aren't any women in the colony around his age. He's only 15 right now, so we haven't got to worry about it. But that could be a bit of a concern. Oh, what is this? Pharmaceuticals unlocks pharmaceutical table and the reambulation pod. This med pod is calibrated for male patients only. This pod is designed for severely injured patients by injecting biodiscardable reconstructive nanomachines, son, into the bloodstream. This devil will fix most wounds over time. Why is it for male patients only? You know, asking for a friend. In brackets, Ciala, who is horribly brain damaged. Ah, uh, I mean, shit, I still want the pharmaceutical table. Not really interested in your bigoted reambulation pod. How's the melee training going then? Arcadius is, Arcadius is coming to a bit of melee training. Fair enough. Uh, 6 there. 11 there. 6.68. 13.66. Is it, is it decently fast? 13.66 jumping up to 13.73. It is pretty quick. We've got power outages. Uh, maybe I'll turn off the particle accelerators. <laughs> Pharmaceutical table. There you are. Titanium, silicon, computer components, and ethanol. We can't make computer components quite yet, but I'll put a pin in it. Military clothing. War lights. Corollian biomeat. Whatever the hell that is. Mechanized armor racks. Advanced biomeat. Gun turrets. Very illegal, but a necessary evil. And finally, the thing I've been waiting all episode to finally research. Wallpaper. And bows. And makeshift weapons. And a bush for your head. And a gas fan. You know what? No, no, no more research. No more. It's all terrible. It's all terrible. It's all terrible. Let's go build some bloody weapons, Ohm, for God's sake. Captain Cuba has flown into a murderous rage because of resurrection psychosis. Oh my God, there was a side effect to bring him back to life. His zombie instincts have kicked in. Sorry, sir. We actually don't allow zombie rampages in this colony. You're going to have to come with me. You're no longer in a murderous rage. Okay, you can go free now, sir. Don't let it happen again. Oh, hang on. <gasps> Deep Space Mining Ship. Is that the industrialization Deep Space Mining Ship that sells the deep drill? Because if that's the case, holy shit, we're going to drown in resources. <gasps> it is. Oh, we can't afford it. Um, be a lot of packaged survival meals? Who doesn't? Maybe you'd like some of my $10,000 minion. What the fuck? Uh, here, take that. I'll take your medicine. Keep the change. Sincerely, we don't need it. The raids are very, very powerful. That's yours, my friend. So this allows us to dig a borehole wherever the hell we want. Say, for example, Ohm's old garden. Then we get little Ohm to very carefully press the fire button. And then we get absolutely everyone else to piss off. Because colonists have a real big habit of just wandering into the giant laser beam. Okay, here it comes. Yeah, that's, um, 
That's pretty vomit inducing. I have made a point of turning off all the robots because the robots too love to throw themselves into the beam at any opportunity. And there we are, one borehole. So on that, we can now build our deep drill, if I can find the bloody thing. Yeah, there we are, deep mine, I should say. And then after that, everybody goes mad. Good. This is actually very, very similar to the mine that we've got, but it has more variation to it. It can access all of the industrializationals, copper, aluminium, and titanium, which is pretty massive. Well, this is a patch, obviously, for Glutatech, but that's pretty massive. That means that we can actually build some of the research that we picked up today, but eventually the Glutatech stuff is going to become pretty damn relevant. That's like our next big tech upgrade beyond Element X32 and Adamantium. In fact, you know what we could do? We could say deep mine titanium forever. We built the titanium castle of Ohm. That would be incredible. Extremely expensive and maybe a little bit dangerous. So we finished auto cookers and we now have the opportunity to make this detonator network that sounds incredible. Not a firearm, by the way. No longer do you have to leave the couch and expose yourself to the elements and stray shrapnel. Just trigger, uh, just to trigger your explosives. Now you can set up a network of towers that relay your detonator signal to the furthest reaches of the universe. Allows the radio mast to be built. So Ohm can sit in his research lab, click a button, and explosives across the map go up. I really, really like that idea. Arcadius has also been hard at work on the jump spines. 15.97 crafting. We should really install those jump spines. Oh, we've got seven of them? Ohm obviously has to get the first one, but I'm not sure I trust anybody else to operate on Ohm, to be honest with you. This is, like, quite a massive implant, too. We're talking about an entire spine. Who's our second best surgeon? And Fiza, 8 out of 20. Oh, fuck, that's a gamble. Um, Okay, well, firstly, everyone should be put on nurse except for the doctors, ironically enough. Uh, That's a pretty horrible idea, but okay. And Fiza, I'll put you on 4 as well, just so you don't take over from Ohm's surgeon duties. Good luck. Let's see if this fancy pink bed hopefully makes up the difference. And if you fuck this up, Anfisa, and kill Ohm, I'll kill you. And then I'll reload. <laughs> oh, we're good. It's okay. We've got a steamwork spine back there. Uh, what's the efficiency of the uh, jump back spine? Regular. 100%. So, so he actually does lose a little bit there by losing his steamwork spine, but that's okay. Can now leap across the map, which is uh, pretty fantastic. And then I think we'll take Anfisa off of surgeoning again, and then we'll go ahead and get six other spines lined up. I think this is going to be a huge upgrade. That's a good third of the colony now with jump spines installed. Ohm. Ciala's got it. Yeah, Ciala has Kipos and Fiza. Billy Bonds is back up already. Bapsnog and Taco Cat. Keg Denta could have one. We do have two more lying around. Or oh, they've been built while we've been waiting for these surgeries to kick off. I want to see how they work. Sorry, I'm stop researching a second. Now let's see. They just let you jump anywhere like a like a jump pack. Like an infinite jump pack. Oh, that's high tier though, eh? That's going to be such a massive upgrade. If our people are surrounded, like Ohm has been on many occasions, we haven't been able to stop kidnappers or, say, Vikings stealing our $25,000 blueprints. Now we can just jump over any enemies and, and get in there. Oh, man, that's insane. Why not? Why not embrace it? Why not blitz through industrial as fast as possible? And why don't we stop ourselves before we finish the final industrial research? So that we can explore everything and see what it is we've actually picked up here fully. Maybe do a little bit of Rim Atomics. Maybe do a little bit more with Rimmerfella. And just absolutely blitz out research after research. Non-lethal weapons is done. Moving on to advanced defenses. Captain Cuba, what is wrong with you? Decided to kill Ohm because of his resurrection psychosis. Yeah, I mean, good luck with that. Maybe he blames Ohm. And to be honest, I don't really blame him for blaming Ohm, to be completely honest. Oh, God, he's resisting arrest. Um... Very carefully, give him a beat down. Emphasis on carefully. The problem is we've given him insanely powerful armor. We could send Omen. I just worry that Omen would knock his head clean off his shoulders. Uh. <laughs> Who did that? Who did that? Who punched his head clean off his shoulders? Head destroyed fresh. Kippos slammed Captain Cuba in the head and annihilated it. How? You're just a regular person. Well, a regular rock person, but a regular person. Back in the freezer with you. We'll deal with you later. Maybe this time Ohm will resurrect him not as a zombie. Tidal power. That one's going to come in really handy. A medicinal compounding factory. Actually very, very good. We can't build it yet because of the 
mechanoid situation, but that's okay. Concealed defenses. Does have turrets, which are definitely firearms, but the barriers could be very good. Or we build a kill box that pops up at the click of a button. Leave that one with me. I might have an idea there. Package survival meals. Remote EMP. Again, very, very good for the next era. Advanced factorization. That's massive because that lets us get to the really advanced glitter tech stuff eventually. Improved drone engines. Uh, gun links? I'm not sure about that one. Um, now there's another deep space mining ship with another sky driller. Because that's got a bit more flexibility than the regular mines we've been building so far, I'm going to buy one of those and I'll also buy all the medicine too because we're doing a lot of bionic surgery right now. Hmm meat. Oh, electrolysis allows us, and atomic assembly coming up next. These are the things that allow us to build those magnetic coils and all of the crazy shit from Glitter Tech. The problem is they take a crazy amount of energy, so I think tomorrow, tomorrow we might have to finally upgrade the power grid a little bit. I don't think two giant nuclear reactors are going to cover it anymore. Tactical grenades are 100% not firearms. I can see it now. The majesty of home jetpacking over a bunch of people, throwing some grenades along the way. That's going to be incredible. I really, really like this SS Researchable Stat Upgrade mod to the extent that I might throw in all of future playthroughs. It's just such a cool idea that you get this research that instead of, say, unlocking a building that lets you build a thing that does it, the research itself having a direct impact on it. In this case, it, it's so minor, but there's such cool little gameplay effects. They produce artificial flavor and reducing the mood debuff when eating nutrient paste from minus four to minus two. What a, what a great little idea. Never occurred to me how much of the industrial era's research is just gun. Gun after gun after gun. Oh, marriage. Who's getting who's getting married? Who isn't already? Cuddles and Cobalt. I see they've gone for matching haircuts, which is... <laughs> ah, just a horrible choice. Just a horrible choice. Oh, seriously? And then Cuddles, who immediately got married... Has become an affair with drones. This is the second wedding this has happened at. Oh, look. More guns. Do love guns. Missile turrets. They're also definitely a firearm. We haven't even got geothermal power yet. <laughs> oh, that's it. Wait, we finished them all. The end of the line. So there's a reason we are still technical industrial right now. The final project is jump packs, which we need a tech print for. We do have the tech print, but I specifically haven't used it so that we could stay in the industrial era and... Figure out half of these things we've researched because there's a bloody lot of research here. Again, a lot of it is base game, a lot of it is firearms. So there isn't a huge amount to look at, but the glitter tech stuff in particular is something that we really need to take a, take a peek at. Not to mention hydroponics, greenhouses, that type of thing. We've got a lot of research based around that. It's still an ice age. It's been an ice age for bloody ages. And our food supplies are getting kind of dangerously low. Like, like, pretty low for what is, well, what fluctuates between being quite a sizable colony and between a mid-sized colony. So we now have the full breadth of the industrial era to work with. I think tomorrow is going to be a lot of fun because we've got things to play around with. Like, for example, plasma fusion reactors, which, to be honest, would fit very nicely in the middle of the Church of Ohm. I think that would be actually so high tier. We've got all sorts of factorization. We've got all sorts of the Rimmerfella stuff to take a look at. Not to mention the regular production tab here has got pretty tanky. Mechaponics Basins, I think we need to build a, a whole bunch of her. And I'm very excited to see where this leads us. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for bearing with me today as well. This has been a, a lot more of a slower, peaceful episode, which has been which has been really nice, but we haven't really done anything super significant. I like to get one big goal done. Well, I mean, we've researched all the industrial era tech, which is pretty significant, but not not like particularly entertaining, I suppose. Today, I also wanted to release the, or, or as you're watching this, I, I have recorded earlier today to go up at like midnight, the uh, ideology series. So go and check that out if you want to see some remote 1.3 alongside this one as well. So this one's been a little bit quieter, but I think tomorrow will more than make up for it when we're knocking down our cathedral and replacing it with a fusion reactor. A thank you, of course, goes out to the patrons of which there has been an insane amount of support over there recently. Almost more than I can keep up with. It's just been 20, 30 messages a day. So I've been frantically trying to stay on top of that. Apologize if there's been a little bit of a delay there replying to everything. But wow, it's been uh, it's been insane. So of course, big thank you to all of you guys. Thank you to Grumpy Furball, Vermin, Luskanai, The Cat Lover, 366, Zodius, Barnikin's Milk, Pang Power, Summoth, Encrest Slave, Biv, Killer Clown, Autumnal Unconquered, The Longhoff, Apple Cat, and Dang Lee Wang for their support of the executive producer tiers over on Patreon, big thank you to you guys for supporting the channel. A big thank you as well to Kaivalar, Edgemere, Natna, My Sweaty Rim Rim, Larry the Emu, Callum James 3, Matthewson T, Evolka, Wifty, Jeebus Crust, Thora, R Chicken Robo, Plasma, 
Ben Ice Cream, Irish Batman, Oz, The Wizard of, Huntsman, and Smurtworm. It took so long, it looped back on itself. It's extremely cursed. All my production is falling apart. <laughs>